Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do a in the hoop notebook cover. I don't actually have one made to show you what it looks like, but let's make it together. This notebook cover comes together in three hooping. Um, the size that I'm going to do takes a 6x10 hoop. I don't have a 6x10 hoop, so I'm going to use my 8x12 hoop. You'll need three pieces of tear away stabilizer. You'll need um, three pieces of batting. And in the PDF that comes with the, the design, it tells you what sizes to cut these. You'll need a front fabric and a back fabric. And I'm going to use these pretty bees. I got this at Hobby Lobby. So you're going to have front and a back. And again, the PDF tells you what size to cut these. You'll need a spine piece, and I'm using faux leather from Bodio. You'll need two inside flat pieces. That's the piece that um, holds the flap of your, your notebook in. You're going to need a lining piece, and this really won't be seen except for like when you're changing the notebook out or whatever. So this really can be any piece. I just chose a gray to match. And in the corner of this one, it has a cute little accent thing where you can put someone's name or someone's uh, monogram or whatever. So I'm going to do this one for my niece. Um, I wasn't sure how big a piece I needed to cut. It told you in the PDF, but I just had a chunk left over. So this is my piece. Probably don't need about half of that. And I'm going to put her name on there. I have the back the back panel loaded into the machine so you got to start with the back panel let's head to the machine all right guys i wasn't sure if i told you but this design is from creative kiwi here we are at the machine i have one piece of tearaway stabilizer hooped and the back of the notebook design loaded so i'm gonna load that in Let's choose that color. And I think I'm ready. So the very first step is to run the placement line directly onto your tearaway stabilizer. I'm just using a piece of leftover quilt batting lay that down making sure you cover all the placement lines and I'm going to take my piece of fabric and lay it right side up again making sure I cover up all the placement lines if you want to you can tape that down I don't really need to with this machine just kind of hold it and guide it as it goes The next step is the quilting. If you don't want it, you can just skip this step. I'm going to add the quilting. Okay, the next thing you do is take one of your flaps. Again, she gives you the measurements in the PDF, what size you need. Just take it and fold it in half and press it. You want to take the fold and put the fold. I'm not sure if you can see, but when you do the design, you can. It did little tick marks right here and right here, like little placement lines. So I'm going to take these, fold side towards the little tick marks, and I'm going to line that up 
on both sides. Take your time here, make sure everything's lined up good like you want it. All right, and now I'm gonna run the next step. Take that down if you feel like you need to. So here's what we got. This is what the front of your hoop looks like. We have our little pocket here. And this is what the back looks like. Now we're going to free this piece from the hoop. While we got this in our hands, let's go ahead and hoop another piece of tearaway. I also don't know that I mentioned this notebook cover is the size for an A5 notebook. She tells you all this in the PDF. That's how I hoop mine. So you can tear all your tear away away. Put it in the garbage. So the side, like this is our pocket side, the side opposite that you can cut right up to the stitches. In fact, you want to cut as close to them as you can get without touching them. Because that's where we're going to be our placement line to line up. Oops, I just cut a little bit of them, but I believe it'll be okay. It's going to be our placement line to line it up when we attach it to the spine. So see, I got really, 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 really close to the stitches. And then the rest of them, you can take your pecan shears and just go around. You can really see it better from the back. Just take your pinking shears, go around. And I only use pinking shears because of the curves like that. And this can be thrown in the garbage. We'll set this aside and now load the spine into the machine. Alright guys, here we are back at the machine. I'm going to load the spine design in. Now it's going to run a placement line. Do not freak out if it doesn't put this in the center of the design because, I mean in the center of the hoop, it's going to put it on the uh, offset at some so that we can attach the, um, the back panel to it. So the first thing is to run the placement lines. Okay, so now I'm going to lay my batting down. And I'm going to lay my piece of faux leather down. You don't have to use faux leather. You can use um, quilt cotton if you want. And now it's going to tack that down. If you feel like you need to, tape that down. The next step is going to do the quilting. If you don't want the quilting, just skip it. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is take this over to the counter or wherever 
and you want to cut just as close to this stitch line right here as you can. Only the batting and your fabric that you used at the top. Don't cut your tear away stabilizer. I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, what I've done is I took this line of stitching right here and I lined them right on top of them other stitches that are under there. Let's see if I can get it up. Right on top. I just lined it right on top and taped it down up here, down here, and in the middle a little bit. And now what it's going to do is it's going to join these two together. If you like the join, then you can leave it. If not, rip it and readjust. And then it's going to do a satin stitch and some pretty decorating stitches. So I'm going to go back to the machine. I just want to show you I have it lined up here. Boop. I have them lined up here. And at the other end where the stitching starts and stops. And I have this line, this stitch line, right on top of that stitch line. Alright guys, I am going to slow my machine all the way down as far as it will go which is 300 stitches a minute and I'm going to run this next step Okay, I was mistaken. It did the placement lines for the um, lining. And now it's going to do the joining down there. Have it all the way slowed down now. Just watching it close and making sure it's going to catch both sides. I'm going to stop it right before it gets to my tape and I'm going to remove it. And continue on. Okay, now it's going to do the bottom placement line for the lining. Nope, it's going to do the satin stitch. So I'm going to stop it and show you what it looks like. So see that join? I'm pretty happy with mine. Now I'm going to put it back in and let it do the satin stitches. No, I can feel it back up now.
cuts you pretty stitching. Look how gorgeous. All right. Next step. Do you remember the first one that it did? And it did this little placement right here when you move this out of the way? Which is what I moved that one out of the way for, but it didn't do that. So you want to take your lining and you want to lay it face down and you want to go past this little tick mark just a little bit. Make sure it's good and straight and then sew that down. going to come to the other side and sew it down. Alright guys, this is the last two pin. So we're going to remove this out. Put our last piece in. You want to make sure when you hoop in your stabilizer that you have your whole hoop laying flat on the table or counter or something and you don't have it in your lap because it won't be nice and smooth and tight that way. There we go. That's my stabilizer. I did find an A5 notebook, so this is going to be the size of the notebook that it takes is an A5. And just for reference, this is an A6 notebook. So it's going to be a significantly bigger. I think it is 5 by 7 maybe, or... I can't remember. Five by seven. I think it had a one. Well, well, this one's been used. I think it had a hundred pages in it when I bought it. So we'll put this one in it when we get through. And these are the A6 size. These make these um, this size notebook covers that are really cute. Cute little Star Wars one. All right, so back to this one. So what we're going to do now is remove our tearaway stabilizer. Okay, you can remove your piece of tape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this lining up so that it's out of the way back here. And I'm going to tape it down just so it stays out of the way for the next tooping. So now we need to cut up this side so that it can join to the front. Just like we did the other side. You want to try not to hit any of your stitches, but these are just placement lines. If you hit them, don't freak out. So I got really close to them. If it'll focus on it. Hello. There we go. Alright. So now you want to load the front in your hoop. And we'll connect all the rest of these pieces together. Alright, here we are back at the machine. I'm going to load the front into the machine. And lock it in. And the first thing is the placement lines.
calls, please. Step number three is the quilting. If you don't want the quilting, you can um, just skip to the next step. The next thing it's going to do is the placement line for the corner accent piece. see that but it did a diagonal line there so I'm going to take my piece of faux leather I'm going to make sure it's going to fit for one there we go I'm just going to cover that line up just a little bit and I'm going to tape it down I know you're shocked I'm taping something down peek under here and see. Yep, there we go. Now I'm going to stitch that down. Alright, so now we have to fold this down. I wish it did a top stitching on it to hold it down, but it don't, so I'm just going to pull it down good and taut. I'm going to pin it, tape it to my hoop right there, I think, and let it stitch it down. Gonna do her name. So now it's going to do the flap and just like before it give us little tick lines which that one's covered up so maybe we can see that it's right there and right there. Thank you. 
Okay, so maybe you weren't supposed to lay the flap down yet, but I'm going to leave mine laying there. Because it kind of sewed it in here. It's going to catch it when it comes back around in a minute anyway. I'm going to go uh, trim this side right here as close as I can get it to the stitches, just like we did the other side. Alright guys, so I did the same thing that I did a while ago. I lined these stitch lines up with the stitch lines that are on this and I taped it down. Okay. Make sure it didn't move and shift. I believe it did. Give me a second guys. I know I'm in the way. I'm going to slow my machine down again all the way down and run the next step. stop it and remove my piece of tape and continue on. I'm happy with that join, so now it's going to do the satin stitch. Okay guys, so now is where you lay this flap down, and it's going to tack it in. right here just a little bit so I'm going to snip that there we go so now we need to take the tape off our lining there we go unroll it and lay it all flat and let it tack it down Now it's going to come down here to this side and do the same thing. And we're through stitching. Alright, so this is what your hoop looks like. This is the back. 
so we can remove it from the hoop. Be free! Remove the tearaway stabilizer. Take your pinking shears from the back so you can see your stitching and trim around all of these. You want to leave maybe a quarter of an inch or so around. Okay. I'm going to keep this piece big enough to do something else with, but the rest of this is going to go in the garbage. She says to trim these down straight as well too, so I'm going to finger press it. I don't know if this is absolutely necessary. You could probably just tuck that right in. Any leftover that you had left over there hanging over. So trim it down to the stitches, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, the next thing is to flip it through here. So take your tube and flip it out. Alright, just like this. Press on your sides, and there's your lining, and this is what your front looks like. So you can remove any tape that's left on here, and then take your side seams, and I mean your little flaps, and you want to flip them to the back. And you want these to be good and smooth, so take your time here, even take your little turning tool whatever helps you and get your corner straight and purdy there we go there's one and I'm going to do the other one So I think at this at this point you'll want to go to the iron and press it down good. I um I have faux leather on mine, so I don't know how that'll work. Maybe if I lay a Teflon sheet down. Let me go and do that and try and see it. I hope I don't mess it up. Alright guys, I think because I have faux leather, I don't think the pressing helped any, but if you or using quilting cotton, just go right on ahead and press it. I think it'll help. Oh, this is so cute. Adorable. Look at that. Look at that, guys. Now, obviously, before I give it to her, I will give her a new book when they come in. Amazon's being slow. I want to work on this corner a little better as well. So just get it how you want it. Make it curvy. Again, this design is from Creative Kiwi. I will have a link down in the description below. I hope this tutorial helped you. That's it. And that's it, guys. That's all for me today. I'll see you in the next one.